Hello, today we are talking about a 50mm f1.8 from Viltrox for Sony E-mount full-frame mirrorless cameras. This is the lens that I have right here. And this is a 50mm, this is this is pretty much a nifty 50 from Viltrox because if you think about it, a 50mm f1.8 is usually the cheapest prime lens that you can get for any camera system like uh, Canon, Nikon, Sony as well. And this lens from Viltrox is the same focal length, the same aperture, but just an offering from a third party manufacturer. So we're going to take a look at some sample images. Uh, we're going to mostly um, focus today on landscape and astrophotography in this review. So if you want to see how the autofocus performs here for portraits, this is not the video for you. But if you want to shoot with it landscapes or astrophotography, then this is the video for you. Stick around because we're going to take a look at some sample images so you can see uh, how it behaves in these situations. And uh, yeah, we're going to also take a look at some build quality and stuff. So yeah, let's get started. So first off, the lens itself is looks really solidly made. It's all metal on all around. It has a very wide and very smoothly turning focus ring, which is really nice for manual focusing. And then and the second ring that you have right here is the aperture ring, as you can see. And the aperture ring, you can either use the ring directly to control the camera's aperture, or you can set it to um, you can set it to auto, which is all the way here, letter A. And in this mode, the camera is controlling the aperture. So you can uh, still use a manual mode in camera and just control the aperture from the camera. Or you can control uh, the aperture directly via this ring. And I think it's it's really it's really useful. If you're doing some kind of a video work, um, be aware that this um, aperture ring is clickless. There are no sounds, nothing like this, and no hard stops, no haptic uh, feedback as well as you turn it. So um, if this is useful for you, then uh, great. But uh, honestly, for the most convenience, I would just switch this to this A setting right here and then control everything from the camera like you, like you normally would with a regular lens. And the lens comes with a lens hood, which is plastic. And I like the fact that it is plastic. I have been working with metal lens hoods before and it's just clunky and loud. And I, I, I actually like the fact that it is plastic. And they improved a little bit with their lens hood from the lens that I have been previously uh, reviewing, which was the Viltrox 85mm f1.8 for Canon RF, because that lens hood was really finicky to get it on and get it off. And this one, no problem. I can just put it on like this for storage. I can easily put it in the other direction for the actual usage. So I think this lens hood is really well designed. And of course we have a lens cap that is also plastic. Really nice to use. No complaints here, just the standard lens cap. Um, okay, so uh, like I said, the lens looks really great uh, on the outside. So let's see how it actually performs. So I'm going to take a look at some images. I have, I usually was capturing a version of at f1.8 the maximum aperture and then at f2.8, which is like a little bit more than one stop uh, closed down. I'm going to compare sharpness and also corner performance for uh, star fields. So let's take a look. Okay, so uh, let's start off with some uh, daytime landscape images. So as you can see, we have an image here of a cliff and a lighthouse, some sea. This is this has been taken on uh, Mallorca on my recent uh, trip to the Mediterranean. And we have a 1.8, we have a f2, we have 2.8 and we have f4. So let's compare the f1.8 to f2.8 for instance. And here we can see we have the 1.8 on the left. So let's zoom in. And as you can see, when it comes to um, sharpness, um, there is really not that much of a difference here in the distance. We can go to 200. And right now at 200, as you can see, the f2.8 is maybe slightly sharper. But honestly, um, there's, there's not much that of a difference. So the 1.8, I would say it's pretty sharp uh, right from the right from the brightest aperture, which is impressive. Uh, let's take a look at some other examples here. I have a stone wall and again we have 1.8 and f2.8. So let's compare the two. And we have again 1.8 on the left. So let's zoom in to the middle. And as you can see on this rock here on a subject that is close to me, 
you can when you pixel peep at, at 200 zoom you can definitely see that the f2.8 is sharper but honestly it's it's not far off it's not far off if you if you take a look at this image like like that there's there's not much uh, of a difference you really would have to pixel peep and if you look into the corners i would say the corner sharpness is pretty much the same as in the middle there is not much of a difference which is again impressive because usually the corners are way softer than the middle again on f2.8 we have slightly more sharpness than f1.8 but even f1.8 holds up pretty well i would say so uh, yeah that's definitely a big uh, win as you can see the corners all of them look pretty good you can see some softness here again but you know it's it's to be expected as usually in the corners at the brightest aperture you're not gonna have the best sharpness so uh, overall i think really good performance when it comes to sharpness um so let's take a look for instance the, the, the images overall look pretty nice that the bokeh looks very nice and pleasing as you can see we have some bokeh in the foreground we have some bokeh in the background. Uh, I was focusing, I think, uh, somewhere here on this uh, Vespa. Uh, and again, here on this image, we have 1.8, so extreme bokeh. I was focusing on this flower, and as you can see, the, um, the background looks really nice and soft, very pleasing uh, rendering of bokeh. And here uh, in the front, as you can see, the sharpness again, I was focusing on this part of this leaf here on this flower. And I think this sharpness is very much satisfactory for such a lens. Uh, what else do we have here? We have some images of architecture here. We have some fountain. Uh, I was focusing on the fountain, so the background is a little bit blurred. Again, 1.8 here. Uh, but as you can see, the sharpness in the middle is very nice. Uh, you can clearly see some text here, some cracks in this stone. And you can even see the droplets of water from the fountain being captured. Really nice and sharp at f, um, again, f1.8 and 1 to 1,000th of a second shutter. Um, so yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, for landscapes, these kind of cityscapes, etc. Very nice lens, very nice rendering of bokeh. Uh, very good sharpness straight from f1.8 I would say uh, and overall a very very positive uh, sort of feel uh, the focus ring like I said is very nice and smooth and it's easy to turn and I was using this on my Sony a7s2 which is not the best landscape lens uh, so th those images are not the highest resolution but even with such a low resolution of the Sony a7s2 I was really pleased with the images that I got. So let's take a look at some astrophotography and also we're going to compare it to the performance of a Sony f1.8 50mm which is going to be pretty interesting. So uh, let's take a look at that now. So here I have some images. Those are images, uh, those are tracked images of the core area of the Milky Way. Uh, here we have f1.8 um, I think actually these, uh, um, yeah, we have 2.8 and we have 1.8. So let's compare the two. And this is of course a single shot. I just edited sort of quickly here in Lightroom, a couple of sliders like you know, clarity, contrast and stuff. Uh, let's switch them up. So we have 1.8 again on the left and let's go into the middle. And as you can see in the middle, the stars look um, pretty well. There's not much of a difference between um, f1.8 and f2.8. Uh, these both have been shot at ISO 3200, which is nothing for the Sony 7S2. But if you go to the uh, corners, as you can see in the corners, <coughs> sorry, as you can see in the corners, there's not much degradation when it comes to the shapes of stars, which is pretty impressive. Usually at f1.8 or just you know the brightest aperture on a prime lens. I would expect some sort of astigmatism and coma here in the corners on the f1.8, but I don't know, we'll see anything here. Another corner here looks pretty good, maybe some coma here, maybe on these stars, but again, <clears throat> not a lot. And compared to the f2.8, very, very similar performance. So I would say um, we have some aberrations here, but again, even at f2.8, those are still pretty much the same. Uh, so I would say this lens performs very impressively when it comes to astrophotography even at f1.8. It is totally capable to be used wide open uh, 
which again is impressive because usually we don't see such a performance as you will see in, uh, in the next example of the uh, Sony offering with this Nifty 50 um, lens. Uh, I don't have the Sony, but uh, courtesy to one of my followers on Instagram, uh, Chitan Kapoor, you can check out his profile down below in the description. He sent me some files that he shot um, using his Sony 50mm f1.8 and let's take a look at these. So. Again, here we have a one point, uh, sorry, this one is f1.8 and this one is f2.8 to give ourselves a comparable sort of difference here compared to my Viltrox. Um, so let's compare. Again, we have f1.8 on the left and if we go to the corners, look at that. Look at this terrible, I don't know, it's, it's it just, it looks, it's just sad, you know. These shapes of the, those are not round stars. This is astigmatism and combined with some coma. Even at f2.8, it looks pretty terrible. And I would say even at f2.8, the Sony looks worse than the Viltrox at f1.8, which again is a huge thumbs up for the Viltrox. And the same thing we can see on the left edge, we have astigmatism. And in general, the Sony at f1.8 looks pretty crappy, I would say. And the Viltrox definitely wins. Uh, I also wanted to show you one more thing about the Viltrox, uh, which is, wait a minute, where is it here? Let's actually reset that. We have again 2.8 and we have 1.8. And if we reset that, um, as you can see the um, vignetting, again 1.8, f2.8, 1.8, f2.8. As you can see at f1.8 the vignetting is definitely stronger than at, at, f, at, then at f2.8 but this is again to be expected at the widest aperture we have the most vignetting but vignetting could be easily corrected with um, in Lightroom here so again we've corrected uh, sort of profile with a lens profile applied as you can see this vignetting pretty much goes away and you can also shoot flats if you're doing like deep sky astrophotography stuff with that so vignetting shouldn't be that much of a problem um, but let's actually do one more comparison here we have um, Big Dipper it's probably not that apparent uh, but if we go here to one of the some of the stars of the Dipper as you can see at f1.8 wait a minute let's switch again 1.8 on the left and we see a little bit of a blooming effect on the stars the star is smaller in diameter on the f2.8 uh, so with brightest stars with bright stars you would see a little bit of this maybe blooming uh, on the f2 of f1.8 aperture but it's it's in my opinion nothing really to worry about as you can see here we are approaching some site and the corner of the image and even at f1.8 one of them one of the brightest stars one of the brighter stars one of the stars of the big dipper we don't see much aberration so i would say that this lens is definitely usable for astrophotography uh, and if we compare the prices of the 50mm f1.8 uh, Viltrox, which I have here with the Sony, the Sony is 250 US dollars and the Viltrox is 350. So the Viltrox is more expensive and you might say that why would I pay more for a third party lens where I could pay less and get the Sony version of the lens. But the Sony version is far worse as we have seen. If you want to do any kind of astrophotography, I would definitely recommend this Viltrox over the Sony. And I think at 350 f1.8, you can definitely do a lot when it comes to night sky photography. If you have a tracker, then you can take uh, some amazing images. Here is one of the image, uh, one of my final images from Mallorca using a 50 mm lens. I didn't shoot this with the Viltrox. I shot this with my Sigma 50 because I wanted to use my Canon camera, the one that I'm shooting this video on, which was my main astrophotography camera. And as you can see at 50 millimeter, you can really capture a nice portion of the Milky Way that looks very, very nice and impressive uh, if you have some cool foreground to pair up with it. So would I recommend the Viltrox? Yes, I would recommend the Viltrox. I think at this price, the performance of this lens is very, uh, very, very good. Uh, and I would, I would recommend this for landscape and astro. I haven't tested the autofocus like at all because on the Sony a7S2, the autofocus is terrible, so it wouldn't be fair. 
but if you're okay with manually focusing and want to use this lens for such purposes, then uh, yep, I would recommend it. Uh, and that's basically it for me for this video. If you found this film helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. I would appreciate and also consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. And by the way, um, the links uh, to the lens, of course, are in the description. Bye.